What's good, Internet? Welcome to session 122 of Super GG Radio, where friends chat about video games and all things adjacent. I am your host and guy who only plays Guilty Gear Strive with a fight stick, Alex Arona. I really... Joel, we gotta get back to that. I've played like 20 minutes of that game. Same. We need to fix that. Okay. With me always this week is co-host and guy who only plays as all-around fighters, Joel DeWitt. You know what they say, Alex. Ryu of all trades, master of none. I like that, see? And I was always a Ryu guy. You're my Ken. You're Ken. Mm, that doesn't sound right. <laughs> With us also this week is the man who can only play a fighter if everyone picks random characters, Alec Parks. Randomizers just even the playing field, Alex. You never know what you're going to get. If I were to play a fighter, I'd make a banana controller, and every kick would be called Fruit by the Foot. Damn it, Kenny's not here, and that's really clever. It was work, awesome. That was a good that was one. Good. Yeah, good work. This week, we swing the golf club in early adopters, jump on the Persona hype train in the news, then let Joel fill in the backlog vlog because he owes us. You owe us, Joel. I owe you nothing. But first, early adopters, where we play alphas, betas, and games that Joel probably didn't play until an hour before recording. Damn, Getty, he's being harsh today. He's being real harsh. Uh, Joel, did, yeah. did, did, which one of these did you play? Um, as far as I know, three out of three. Oh, snap, Alec. Are you on the three out of three train? You're on the two out of two. I, nah, I'm only on one. I mm. One. Mm. I had difficulty getting Killspiracy to work on Linux. I, 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 appreciate, I appreciate you joining the r- lower runs with me here. <laughs> <laughs> You're I tried, man. I started playing these at like four <laughs> o'clock, so that was like four and a half hours of playtime opportunity, mm-hmm. and I just got frustrated getting. Admittedly, this is a Linux issue. Getting mm. Killspiracy running. Golf well, Club Wasteland that booted right up and was gold. Let's do a little. Let's do a little sandwich here. Uh, Killspiracy. Uh, Killspiracy is a first-person shooter throwback to the days of Doom with very grainy kind of dirty graphics and you are there to help cult members is that was that the case you were you're trying to collect uh the eyes that you know the pyramid eye symbol that is uh yeah the illuminati and then you're saving cult members and you're shooting uh lasers out of your hands which has an eye on it which also has an eye on it that sort of blinks every time you shoot, I think. Yeah, this, uh, gosh, they really have some dark and dank places that they have you go through. You know, that, that twitch sand area that um, really, really just felt claustrophobic. The The gameplay itself, like you said, it is old doom. You know, you're doing WASD to move and, and strafe, and, and then... You have your mouse that helps you aim and shoot. And there's a shoot, and then there's a grenade. The grenades I kind of found unwieldy. Like, it, I never quite knew what distance they were going to land at. Yeah. Um, no, that's true. Okay, so that wasn't just me. Good. No. <laughs> but uh, the, the visuals are probably the most stark thing here. Because, you know, you're used to the blood and door and stuff in Doom. This is all, like you said, sort of you know, black-draped clo- uh, cult members... TV heads with sort of the triangle and then the swirlies behind it. And they, they always, always said this sort of like weird thank you at, once they picked you up too, which is really kind of like off putting, dis- disturbing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, what did you think of it? Uh, I thought it felt good. It was fast paced. Uh, you know, I, I felt like it moved really smooth and. Just kind of like Doom, it was a lot of run and gun in these hallways and corridors and exploring the map because you had to collect uh, collect or save a certain number of cult members to progress into the next level. And the biomes were varied with, you know, being in a graveyard, being in a, like what seemed like an Egyptian tomb. Uh, I just, yeah, I just, uh, I thought it, was, it felt good. I felt a little repetitive on the environments and gameplay, but... Uh, I think that the there was a lot there to feel like the classics, and that's kind of where 
Uh, I like when the games do a little bit of a throwback. Those throwbacks are kind of fun, especially if they get mm-hmm. the feel right. It, you know, we played a game, uh, I think, in the beginning days where it it was like a skeleton Sonic, and it looked and tried oh, yeah. to be Sonic, but it yeah. did not feel like Sonic at all. And I think that that's what Kill Spiracy does. It does Doom and feels like Doom. Right, right. But with I mean, obviously like a cartoony theme and tinge to it. Sure. Yeah, it's... It kind of harkened back to like the old MTV days where it was just sort of a bit more like psychedelic kind of stuff going on, right? So yeah. that, that's what it makes me think of. Yeah, and like even the stage itself, like like when you, the menu, you're in the middle of the desert and there's just like a, uh, a bar, like a bar and that's your exit apparently. If you click it, it just kicks you out of the game. And mm-hmm. then you had to go and find a portal, which is a flat texture on the ground. You just have to look at the ground to find where you enter like the levels. And I, I, when I started this, I go, oh man, somebody's going to have a problem and not be able to play the game because they couldn't find the entrance. I absolutely exited the game the first time I turned it on. I, 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 I would turn it on. And then I turned towards the road, and I started walking towards the road, because I didn't see the portal at all. So I, I sort of looked around, then I dove back after, like, walking 30 seconds that way, and decided, like, the building has to be the only thing, right? And so I clicked, and it exits out. Yep. Uh, second time, I logged back in, and then I just followed that road longer. Nothing. So I turned back around, and... There, I finally see the portal, like, right to the other side of that building. Uh, I, so I, th- I think I, I need are, more if, clear. I need more clear direction. <laughs> if we were to critique this, that would be one thing I would say would be, that would be like, but I would also, you know, because the humor is so like tongue in cheek, I would just put a really big, ironic uh, level select here arrow pointing down. Mm-hmm. Like that would be mm-hmm. funny to me. You're in the middle of the desert bar. That's the exit level select big arrow here yeah that seems yeah, funny I agree with that. to me so that was uh kill spiracy uh now alec you and the dozens of linux users uh found a way to make uh golf club wasteland work on linux tell me about golf club wasteland well first i want you to know it was steam who actually made it work on Linux. I didn't have to do anything for this one. Thank you, Steam. Yes. Uh, so you, this takes place in a post-apocalyptic wasteland, for lack of a better term. It, the, the big disaster has happened. The ultra-rich went to Mars. They live in Tesla City. Surprise. Mm-hmm. And you take chartered flights back to earth to play golf in the destroyed remains yes (laughs) it was you go through these levels it's more like mini golf than it is golf which is absolutely awesome i prefer mini golf the controls were pretty easy to use you drag your mouse and back and you angle your shot and you get it going i i have to say that cow in the second level ate my ball probably about four times <laughs> okay uh the squirrels kept getting mine in that one squirrel level where you had to jump on top of tree stumps with each ball oh. yeah you're both right those are both bad spots <laughs> and, and it's it's not like it's unfair or anything it's just like one of those cases where you you don't think you keep on just hitting your head against the wall without trying to rethink your strategy. Yep, and then and then th- uh, thematically, it's got the chill beat, you know, the beats to chill and study to type vibe with the music, mm-hmm. so you can kind of just like relax and just play some golf. The what I like is that uh, on the in the un- unseen side of it, there are like hidden like diary entries that kind of hint at something malicious happening or something evil in the background. And then on top of that, there are shadows in the foreground of you playing golf of things skittering about and moving about. Mm -hmm. That makes me think that there will be more to this game. Yeah. uh, Well, the very first thing when it drops off is it says 
oh, there's supposed to be a group that comes off of the exit zone. And then it launches you into the game and it's just you. Like, you already have this idea that something is not right. Yeah, there's definitely a unsettling undertones to the game and area. It, it's And it's funny because it's juxtaposed with that you guys paid attention to any of the radio while yes, the game was going I, on. I, I love the stories that came up. Yes, exactly. Like, one of them I noticed right away. It was, like, interview with somebody who was a former, I think, like, head fu- hedge fund manager or something like that. <laughs> and, and the whole conversation, he, he's clearly talking with a tone of, like, remorse for what he did but then oh, he was also talking about how he felt you know his job didn't mean anything of course once uh, catastrophe hit and it, it's just one of those things that uh, really cuts into that sort of mysterious nature to things yep and then he felt like he was like a hero and all this stuff because he helped rebuild it, yeah there's a lot of stuff going on especially, mm-hmm. especially in what like why we why the human race left and what remains because obviously the super rich were the only ones that left right so yeah. left right left right up down up down <laughs> so uh and it's very it's very uh minimal art style you are a smooth textured almost cartoonish guy in an astronaut outfit with the big dome oxygen mask and you are hitting a ball around uh sh- destroyed shopping malls and uh different terrain i f- i like that you go to an underground facility and the music on the radio cuts out so it's just real silent and real spooky as you're golfing in this factory mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. which was now, weirder because why was the factory still going if everyone left might just i'm be pretty like a- sure some of that foreground had humanoids in it yeah i think so I just figured this was kind of a Wally situation. Everything's mm. gone. Maybe there's something rustling around doing the cleanup. I do mm. enjoy Wally. Good he, choice. He has he has a heart of gold. Shout out to Wally. Shout out to Wally. Uh, okay, so that was a uh, golf club wasteland. I really, really, uh, I I already wish listed it. Alec, what do you think? I don't know. It's got a couple of things that. I'm not super keen on. Um, I wish there was a little more projection on where your ball is going to go okay. instead of just the small arc. Yeah, uh, That kind of took a little bit of getting used to. I, I'm definitely going to keep an eye on it. And might wish list it later. What do you think, Joel? This is the kind of game where the mystery and story comes first and the gameplay comes second. So, so mm-hmm. like, I... I think the mechanics are competent they work well enough i I agree with alec there there could definitely be more to it but if i were to play it it'd be just to sort of experience the world and just try to suss out what they've made and what kind of mysteries and tragedies that have happened in it you know you guys ever played desert golf no No. it was it was just plain uh like uh it's in the desert so you just see like a uh, orange triangle and the other side of the orange triangle is just like the hole and you just see the ball and that's all it is and it's a phone game you just pull and you shoot as many times as you need to to get the ball in the hole then the camera just pans to the right and now it's the next terrain and it's it's like something like like thousands of levels but it's just mm-hmm. a slight shift in terrain just like two color palette go and uh that's kind of what this reminded me of because i was just hitting the ball and just like next and then it would like to me it was relaxing to hear the the music that i that i like that kind of music uh just the, the the mellow hip-hop beats and then just hitting it to the next one to the next one to the next one. I, I stopped caring what i did kind of like though was that in certain parts there were like contraption based events you yes. could like hit a button and you will get a, a hidden area or a, like I, I hit my ball into a tennis launcher, and then I uh, it, then the, it shot the ball across the the level. So that was cool. I thought that was very mouse trappy. Yeah, I feel like and, mouse trap. And there are it seems like most levels there's or some levels at least there's a couple ways you can approach towards the hole too. One of those factory levels, you the clear way to go would be just sort of bouncing up to the left, 
jumping up the next platform, then going to the right to dig the hole. Uh, instead, what you should do is take your shot out to a deck, and, and then shoot it up and into the window outside, if you got a high enough angle, and then get a closer shot that way. Oh, okay, so yeah, there there's multiple ways to uh, find the hole. Yep. <laughs> That's the same golf. It's a golf term, Alec. I'm not golf term, Alec. What's up? Conversation. It's a golf term. It's Boomerang back to the point with Boomerang X. Joel, you and I played Boomerang X. Yes. Yes, Uh, I did. You you beat it. I'm right on the cusp. It's a real short, you know, what two to three hour experience, where uh, you have washed up on a remote island, where it seems like. Is it the end of the world? That's that's a good theory, good interpretation. A because uh, Boomerang X is very cryptic in its storytelling, in, in that you're really just sort of sussing out the details of what's happening uh, by the events and then the little breadcrumbs. Because there's that little like millipede looking creature right that you ran into a few times and he sort of gives you little details about oh there looks like there was a civilization here oh you know it looks like they were searching for some artifact and then they found a terrible end (laughs) and you see like statues that have half been destroyed and like you know you can tell like oh this was the bathhouse this was the this was the food area this was the you know the worship pit you know it's like Mm -hmm. these different bits and then the gameplay is you throw the boomerang and then you recall it Or, uh, you know, follow me now, you throw the boomerang, and then you get tossed to where the boomerang is. Right. And and that is hella fun. That is, I am just rocket launching across the room, just throw boomerang, jump to it, throw boomerang, jump to it. Oh, got to go left, throw boomerang, jump to it. And I I damn near forget where I'm kind of going at some point, where I'm like, am I going up or down? I, because I... There's also a slow mo button, mm-hmm. and I kind of just jam on that. It doesn't really have too much of a cooldown. It's like yeah. it's got like a half a second cooldown, but it lasts a while. So I'm just kind of jamming on that, throw boomerang, jam on that, and then I kind of forget. I have to let go of the slow mo because I'm like, where am I going? Left, right, forward, mm-hmm. back? I don't. I lost my direction because I'm trying to throw the boomerang, catch it, slow mo, turn to an enemy, and throw the boomerang at them. You know, yeah. Like, yeah, it's and the thing about that is that you have to uh, let go sometime because you don't gain your momentum back until you let go of that slow mo. So, so like I had cases where I would be zipping over to kill one enemy. I'd see one of those guys that just sort of stands there near the bottom, and you, I sort of like drop down as quickly as I can to get momentum before being where the hit spot was, so I could have the speed to get out of the situation too. Uh, it, it's it is unwieldy. Like that that is one thing absolutely true about this game. It, the boomerang mechanic feels very swift and quick, but uh, in the throes of battle, it, it isn't always that clear. Like what direction you're gonna take if you made the right turn in time. But it's it's good. It's really really good. It, it reminds me of uh, you guys played Gravity Rush. Yes. Okay, so like it's a little different in that gravity rush. You're dealing with her as your center of gravity, but it's it's similar in that she's unwieldy to fight in with in that game. Like she she floats in these weird angles. You have to also time your, your kicks to sort of go to the right trajectory, and she's you know fighting sim- similar like black inky, you know melting off of it kind of monsters too. Uh, but it, it's. I don't know. This really just struck me in a way that uh, sometimes we don't get from Devolver. Like I like Devolver as a developer and publisher, but they take chances, and sometimes the chance doesn't mean they hit hard on it. But yeah, the, this one, I, the one thing I I, I was kind of hoping for like some some platforming puzzles when really it's just uh, get new ability. Or it's like it's talk to somebody or talk to somebody or explore a new area for like a very split second. It's, it's a it's a hallway, but you get like, you know, environmental storytelling. This is this place is kind of destroyed, but you can tell what kind of area it is. You walk, you know, ten to fifteen feet, and then it's new ability, combat arena, hallway again. 
You know what I mean? So yeah. I, that's the one thing I kind of felt lacking of is that I, I just kind of wanted a little bit. I wanted the platforming. I wanted to be able to, I wanted to have to clear a bunch of platforms by doing these multiple jumps and then avoid, you know, a trap or something. I wanted to do a little bit more than just like move forward through a hallway combat arena. I I felt that way starting out, and the more I played it, I was I got in the zone and thought like, yeah, I I'm not sure I really want to be on the ground at all. Does, does I, I don't know when you were fighting, did you stop much on the ground to no. regroup or anything? I was in the air almost the entire time. They give you that ability where after doing a three hit combo, when you drop in the ground, it creates an explosion. Yeah, I the only time I triggered that was on accident. Yeah, same here. <laughs> when, same here. When I hit a wall, because like there, there's no fun. Number one, there's no point really, other than there are these towers that have a health icon, and if you stand on it long enough, it's gonna give you a shield health back. Uh, well, there's just no value to doing it. There just isn't because when you stand somewhere, you're just a sitting duck for anything that's floating near you, especially at the end. Yeah, I completely agree. So. I think with that, um, I just, yeah, I just feel like that uh, I, the combat is second to none. I feel like it was fast. It was you just got to keep moving. Uh, I I use the shotgun. You get a little, like, a shotgun out of your hand blast. That's pretty cool. You also get a laser attack, but the laser attack I, I feel like I never really used. Um, but I just boomerang and jump to the next thing slow-mo i found that i was whole i was doing both those things so rapidly that i started to get cramps in my hands because it's just all because those two moves are just trigger and even like recalling your boomerang is bumper so you're not really using the face buttons unless you want to do that one shotgun blast or Mm -hmm. you can stop yourself mid-air which is kind of stupid you can just like jump yourself forward and then hit the brakes right (laughs) which is a little silly but for the most part, I was like triggers, trigger, trigger constantly. This is now, one I God. Th- these abilities that you didn't end up using, do you think it's because they were underdeveloped, out of place, or just because they didn't fit your play style? Um, hmm. I, I think, I think to a degree, my play style, because I. I just got in a rhythm once they gave you the option to be more vertical, to go vertical. Um, the the thing like the stomp move, when you get it, it's sometime at a point. Because these levels start out where like they're just open rooms. And some of them start out like fairly small, the, everything's ground. And then they get more and more verticality and it becomes less and less space to walk on. Uh, because of that, that particular move gets a little less useful each time that mm-hmm. you go on unless you're going to try to stomp on them but that's going to cause you damage yourself because you don't want to touch these monsters they damage you if you do that you have to hit their hit spots and they're I feel like, like there is a there is a there, there is a way to play using your shotgun or laser ability yes um so i, I, I there's got to be a way to do it i just don't feel like i think the fun is being vertical i think the fun is dashing around uh i i can't i can't imagine playing this like fully just running from place to place you know like there's some spots that you can't but even later game they do try to make you get grounded they'll put you in like a full arena with nothing in the air and so they're saying like oh stay on the ground for this one they'll put like spikes in the ceiling Mm -hmm. but even then i was i was i was never touching the ground i'm just uh, never there so Maybe it might be a playstyle thing, uh, but I also feel like playing that way I would not be as fun. So I, I agree, right. and, and this is one I play it on Switch. Uh, I could do very little on the handheld after the first three or four levels. Really, I, it, didn't I, didn't play I just, well? And it wasn't about not playing well. It just didn't work for me. I it, I needed sort of the full controller. I needed to have a bigger screen to just be able to have that full point of view where the screen the switch screen is into a point for me where certain games i don't want to play handheld and i think Mm -hmm. that's why i'm doing a lot of indie stuff on it more than anything is because like i will play the big games you know with the tv because i want that full experience but this one i was surprised I, i needed that full screen space and a more hefty controller to really be able to get through it okay i went pc this round so uh, definitely, uh, definitely a lot of fun. Ran really smooth, and obviously, it sounds like the switch went just fine as well. Uh, but yeah, I I think 
Uh, if you're looking for a small experience like that, you want to try something different, the thing that makes the combat feel really well in a short, uh, short time, I think Boomerang X is it. I would recommend that. I honestly would. Uh, but the older I get, the more I become a golf person. There's just something relaxing about knocking the o no. <laughs> <laughs> I almost Ron Burgundy in that one too. Not gonna do it. Let's take a break, guys. We'll be right back. <laughs> I heard you really liked the Rugrats back in the day. Hey, Arnold, isn't that Doug funny? <laughs> okay, it is okay sometimes. That, that wasn't I, bad. <laughs> I tried not to laugh at it. Like, reading it, it didn't seem like it was going to be as funny as it was when you said it. <laughs> yep. All right, so news. Uh, Nickelodeon All-Star All -Star Brawl announced the internet was set ablaze as... Uh, they announced their own Smash Brothers with rollback netcode. Uh, man, I don't know. What, yes, I, I know what rollback netcode is. I don't know why it is a feature that everyone is talking about. I mean, I guess because Smash doesn't have it? Is that, like, the main thing? So I, I did very, very little reading. But basically, there is rollback netcode, and then there's another kind of netcode that was normally used that, switch, or that uh, Smash Brothers still adheres to. But rollback is the more common thing now because the claim is that it is more precise. Uh, the other kind of netcode style, I think the way it works is that the game will actually slow down to account for the delay. Where the rollback stuff, it'll try to predict what is going to happen and then sort of tweak it as things get corrected in time. Yeah, I did, well, it's more about the fact that I just don't know why that, like, everyone is so, like, rollback netcode, oh my god, oh my god. And I'm like, well, okay, I mean, a lot of games have rollback netcode. I really think well, it's just a chance to rag on Nintendo. <laughs> okay. Also, this is the first Brawl-style game that has rollback netcode. All oh, of your really? other ones with... Yeah, all your other hmm. rollback netcode games are your traditional Street Fighter-esque fighters. And I'm, I'm so, totally, yeah, I'm, I'm totally happy with competitors in this space. I, you know, I, I wish the PlayStation All Star stuff was better than it was. Uh, it, it just, it has to feel, it has a hard job of like feeling like Smash Brothers, but not being Smash Brothers, right? And the PlayStation One, it didn't work for me for several reasons. I, I think that I'd be interested I like in a sec. I, I would be interested in a second go at it, but. Uh, it needs to be something a little different. Uh, Rivals of Aether, they're apparently trying to get into rollback netcode. Right hmm. now, apparently it's in beta. They're uh, updating it to have rollback netcode. Right. Well, so part of what makes it difficult is not only is it trying to predict what you're doing, but it's also fixing the past as yeah. it gets right. updates. So I, I wonder with this netcode what the functional limit is like how bad can your op opponent's uh, internet connection be and it still works yeah i i'm interested too i i would presume at some point it would just disconnect the match but um i would if you find that answer let me know <laughs> <laughs> uh who's everyone's main uh if you were to play your own nickelodeon all-star game i would go with crumb they have one of the characters from our our, our real monsters but it isn't crumb and oh. crumb should be it. i i don't know i i feel like my character is going to be a dlc character but for the original list here probably reptar like yeah i was, th I was thinking Re reptar reptar well. is a real good one <laughs> i i actually missed the list somebody shoot it to me real quick sure i'll just pop it into the notes and I, they, I stopped around SpongeBob. I think when SpongeBob and uh, Cat Dog happened, I just turned tuned out. Yeah, Cat Dog was my at some point too. So, 
Like, I'm aware of Invader Zim. Uh, who the hell is Danny Phantom? Uh, he is a ha- he is a half ghost person. Oh, I guess I should have figured that out by the name. I'm pro Invader Zim though. I think yeah. that's oh. a that's a good IP. I I want to know who they got to voice Nigel because if it's anybody other than somehow getting Tim Curry's voice in there, it's sacrilege. I got bad Was news it Tim for Curry? you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Nigel Thornberry was Tim Curry. Weird. I did not realize that. He's had an, his, um, he's had his hand in some video game stuff. He uh, did one of the Red Alert games. That, so that, that I did know. FMV. I did know about the Red Alert. Yeah. <clears throat> I, I guess I would probably, uh, depending upon how he played, main Powdered Toast Man, because how do you get? How do you not main Powdered Toast Man? I have no affinity for Red for Ren and Stimpy. <gasps> uh, that oh. was that was the like what weird stuff are you watching in this house go outside show <laughs> Wait, yeah, if i was if i was, in, one episode if I was inside that shit. nope if i was inside that lawn and i had sun, sat in the lawn enough to like be like fine i'll watch this that, that's when i was cut off same here okay next piece of news oh god the list is in here oh god that's a lot um there's a Persona 25th anniversary special website launched with seven new projects. As a long-time Persona fan, I am not hyped because half of these will be like, oh, they released one of the albums for Persona 2 on vinyl. <laughs> I know what I'm getting into. It's like Vinyl th- is awesome. <laughs> Uh, vinyl is yes, awesome. Yes, but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna buy Persona 2 on vinyl. Also, they're gonna say like, "Oh, we have a new concert series in Japan only, where we got the." I'm like, "Yes, I know you do that every year, but that's but, their announcement. Fantastic, because the concert is, series this year will have all of the. Uh, you could tell I'm a little better about all the announcements. Th- this is like the three thousand games on one disc, uh, games you could buy at like Office Max, <laughs> and, and then twenty of them would just be different versions of versions of like Bajan or uh, Checkers. Or yeah. I mean, again, I, I, I Persona one and two, uh, both ver- both twos, because there's a two is a technically a two parter. Um, I have not played those three games, and I, I I have them on my Vita. I should just play them. But, uh, the one thing that they are saying is that they show they sh- they had like an image a uh, promo image where they showed all. Uh, I want to say there's the Persona one antagonist. The two Persona antagonist, Persona two antagonists, the three protagonists plus his gender, uh, his gender swapped uh, version, four and five protagonists all in one image, which is they say like one of the few times that uh, Atlas has ever recognized that Persona one and two exist. Huh. They tried, they try to like bury those and be like, ah, those are over there. No one needs to look at those. You know, everybody could have bought a PlayStation plat classic that they would have gotten it right there i know just i agree it was right out there and those are on sale for like 20 bucks <laughs> at some point worth it uh next piece of news reports are about judgment uh the series uh from the yakuza uh devs they said that they were going to make yakuza turn based from here on out judgment would be their beat up and their second installment was coming out soon but apparently that will be the end of the series as there's a disagreement between the game being released on PC. Japan has weird rules and, and opinions on things that kind of turn turn things into uh, an, an argument. That's very it, surprising to me. It, it, it does seem a little melodramatic, <laughs> some of these things. And, and I, I think some of it's cultural differences about like standards of and norms that they don't want crossed or something. Uh, but this one specifically, like the the quote is uh, from an insider, because those on the side of game developer and those on the side of the talent agency, Johnny said to have been unable to reach an agreement regarding the platforms to sell the game. So it almost sounds like some sort of internal mismanagement. <laughs> well, it's also the, the voice actor. It's not yeah. even the. It's not, it's not even like the devs. Hmm. Oh, voice actors are a big deal in Japan, from what I understand. Oh, I agree. Uh, so that is sad. Getty will cry. 
just because he just got into judgment. I'd be pretty bummed. But, you know, I hope that they come up with another series that they can put together because uh, they should keep going. Those beat em ups are very, very fun. Uh, next piece of news Stadia to give devs a cut of Stadia Pro revenue based on how often their game is played. Sadly, not a lot of people are playing Stadia these days, so I can't imagine that's a good cut. Is that true? Is it a low player base for Stadia now? I guess I don't know. I only <laughs> imagine. I think there are more Linux players than Stadia players. Ooh, burn. <laughs> on hey, who, uh, though? On who? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh... Apparently, from th- what... This uh, one just, is... Uh, from so, think about how many Stadia reportedly had hundreds of thousands sometimes. fewer players... Hold on. Stadia reportedly had hundreds of thousands of fewer players at release than Google predicted. Whoops. Oops. Yep. I mean, we we so we bought the had, ticket for that ride. <laughs> yeah. uh-huh. Yes, we did, Joel. That controller is now in storage. You can't use it for anything else. I could probably. I, I know you can. I just haven't had. I I have four Xbox controllers and a. Steam control, two Steam controllers. I'm fine. I might need to hit you up. My 360 controller is finally starting to die. Okay. Let me know. Next piece of news. A museum obtains rare demo of id Software's Super Mario Bro- uh, Brothers 3 PC port. Joel, can you tell me a little bit about this one? It's just fun. <laughs> I mean, uh, <laughs> rep- uh. reportedly... Uh, it had been working on behalf of Nintendo to bring this to PC, and it was something that nitzed in the process of being made. It's, I mean, it's fun. If you looked at some of the pictures, it is kind of like that, uh, it's like the third-party controller of video games. You know, it's kind of like the real deal. Some parts it looks okay, and then you see a close-up and his face is all nose <laughs> instead of <laughs> having any facial details and so like it's, it is an interesting, unique thing to look at. There's a good Ars Technica uh, article on it. I encourage anybody to read that. But uh, when it's just, was this from? Uh, 1990. 1990. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So we're talking about a ways back now. Our uh, our youth was a while ago. <laughs> yeah. If only that game could have came to Steam, because Steam announced the handheld Steam Deck damn thing looks like a game gear uh two joysticks at the top buttons and d-pad half falling off the side with a <laughs> touchpad on each side of the screen with a big ass bezel i steam isn't necessarily known for the most ergonomic stuff but this is definitely like taking it to 11 <laughs> that, that b melting off to the side the two touchpads it's just maybe it's, and it's just got, it's got four buttons on the back, the paddles. Oh, God. <laughs> I you mean, know the, what, though? Mm-hmm. I'm more excited about this than I am about the Switch OLED. Like, I'm honestly considering popping the $5 down to reserve one. Well, I you know I feel this I one kind of made... This kind of made sense for you, though, Alec. Not, not being a primary PC user, that would also enable you the option to buy games on Steam beyond the Linux compatible stuff and it has that gameplay functionality too which i I don't know how much handheld you do but would be important to me well also this is um this is based off of the steam os which is linux yep so and like all of these things they there's options to play basically every game through proton which is the compatibility layer that steam has been working on for like four years Huh. And then on, on top of that, and, and this is all, I don't, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not trying to sell anybody on it, but from the sounds of it, they have big plans. They're saying that, uh, you know, this, you can just alt tab out of what, out of the steam, you know, client and just be on a browser and just go to, and just go to a browser. Uh, you can, they said you could just, you could just wipe the OS and, and, and install windows, like do what you <laughs> want with this thing. It is built to just take whatever you want to do to it so go nuts i guess 
Yeah, the pro like the the big set hard sell for me is that it's four hundred dollars to get a sixty four gig, and five thirty to get two fifty six. I yeah, and it, I mean, it does have um, it does have what's it called? Internal. Um, it has a SD card. Uh, SD card. Oh. Yeah. Oh. So so there is options for expandable storage. It, it is one of those things, like you said, like how many other than some indies, how many games that you'd want to play on that will be like 50 plus gigabytes download exactly yeah mm. yep but if i can drop a terabyte card in there okay great i don't care and it's it's a it's ssd uh if you get the 256 the 64 is uh emmc oh okay oh, okay it's a good distinction then because that to me that would be an important difference now like yeah. ssds are important to me uh with how the pc works the Xbox Series X works. It, it's so much quicker and smoother. Well, the the eMMC is basically flash storage. It's not. It doesn't have as high of a bus rate as uh, the NVMe SSDs do. It's nice, but it's yeah. But five hundred and thirty dollars. I'll have to think about it. Yeah, considering you know all the console, the new consoles and whatnot. But on the plus side, they are going to sell, uh, and they're working on an external dock like the Switch, and the external dock will have USB, so you could just hook up, you know, a keyboard, and mouse, and a monitor, and does the, be ready to go. Does the dock have an Ethernet port? It does. Oh snap! I mean, it's not done yet. <laughs> so, but they are. No, but they're the they're. And they, and they, Ketchup has uh, Display Port, HDMI, USB C three USB ports and a Ethernet port. Okay. And uh, there is uh, some video uh, conversations with IGN after they had uh, spent time with the device and uh, their thoughts on it. So, so very interesting. Uh, I love this idea. I will gladly purchase these when they are trying to get rid of them in mega clearance. I might purchase one before that. That'll that'll be a good hundred dollar purchase. It will. Yeah. Uh, Remember, I bought two of those happens. Steam controllers for like ten bucks a piece, like seven yeah. bucks on a Steam sale. Freebies. Time for the freebies, where we talk about the games that are currently free. Eight uh, Bit Boy from Indie Gala, Symphonia on GOG. Uh, Symphonia actually looks really cool. It's an indie game that you play. You use a violin. And you are within uh, like a mystical, like magical world of a symphony, and you're exploring different instruments and stuff like that. I but I I already got that. I'm gonna play it. Defense of Roman Britain uh, in an indie gala. The uh, walking simulator is Serbia one and two on GOG. Thirty three rounds on indie gala. I don't know about that one. Uh, out of touch game force. Uh, that's a uh, an itch.io. Uh, out of touch. And then Offworld Trading Company, we played, uh, we beta tested really early in the beginning days, uh, the multiplayer for uh, Offworld Trading Company on the Epic Game Store. So pick up those freebies. You want to try something new, want to try something fun at the cost, the low, low cost of nothing, give these guys a shot. Now, uh, Getty wrote, we can hang out as long as, nope, I'm gonna, Getty wrote a, the offensive uh, outro, so I'm going to say... Let's just enjoy some Nicktoons. Let's enjoy some Nicktoons. What was your favorite? Ah, uh, real monsters. Joel? Angry Beavers. See, I was Doug. <laughs> I was Doug. He always made me laugh. He was very comical. That, that was a good one, too. That, he, they're like the Charlie Brown of Nickelodeon cartoons. I mean, his dog I was do in Porkchop. I do regularly still find myself humming the theme song for Doug. Do 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 do. I'm not going to keep going. Yeah. <laughs> no, that was pretty good. Let's uh, let's take a break. Be right back. <laughs> And 
and we're back. Back with the Backlog Blog, where we play games that are more reliable than us. I don't know. I think we're pretty reliable, especially with the dates of the podcast going up. We used to be worse. Yes. But now we're pretty, pretty much like clockwork. We're right twice a day? Yes. That too. Yep. Yep, yep that also. All right. So I played a game. Uh, the Sometimes things fall through the cracks. You know, you get you, you get a game that you want to try out, and it never really comes around. And that that has happened to us a couple of times, not often, but it does. And uh, a while ago, I got we got a code for a game called Tanuki Sunset, and we never talked about it on the podcast. And I think that now it should get its due. It's been out for a year. Tanuki Sunset is you are a raccoon in a cell shaded neon world where you ride a skateboard down the highway avoiding trucks and obstacles to uh halfway decent uh hip-hop beats to study to uh that's the one thing that uh like the whole aesthetic of being a rad raccoon on a skateboard going very high speed down a highway all to neon sun- sunsets is wild and cool the hip-hop beats to study to faltering faltering i heard mm. like same six sounds songs and uh even those were like i like three of them so i that, feel like the maybe i gotta play more but as of right now i've the the soundtrack to what i need this game to be which is just like a zen game i need to like just get on a course and drive this raccoon on a skateboard that's all i need from it but i feel like it's taking me out of the zen and of course, there's cool, uh, there's cool drifting where your raccoon spins backwards and he's riding the skateboard backwards, and you have to avoid the obstacles. And then you you can collect gems, which you then spend to make your raccoon look even cooler, <laughs> with cool hats. And and you go to the shop and you talk to your mom, and your mom's always worried about you. Why aren't you wearing your helmet? It's all cute. <laughs> and I just wanted to like give Tanuki Sunset its due, that. Uh, I am j- enjoying myself with it. I think that it's it's a little. It does have a good difficulty curve. It's not just easy, but uh, I feel like the soundtrack could be a little better. Th- that's important for these kind of games, and this is the kind of game you kind of wish that you could have some sort of Spotify integration or an ability to tie it to your PC's playlist somewhere, uh, because that I mean that helps a lot. Th- that's one of those things I remember from the Xbox days. You could, I think, burn CDs to the hard drive on those and then use them as a soundtrack for some, like, racing games and stuff. Yeah. It'd be cool though, to, that to make a comeback. I, I guess Spotify would sort of have everybody buy the neck on that, though. Agreed. But, you know, again, I think that this is a neat little package uh, for anybody just wanting something to just kind of hang out and chill to. Maybe put your own headphones in. Did it give you a Road Rash vibes? No, it gave me more of just like uh, I'm playing Mario Kart by myself. Mm. Mm. So that's kind of how I felt about it. It just it kind of, and there have been a couple of games that we've received that have kind of been like up this al- kind of alley. Uh, I can't remember what there was another one that it was just like it was this, but the you're like in a car, but the car is wireframe. Just say, but it's still the it's still the hip hop beats to study to. It's still the the neon colors and everything like that. So this is definitely uh, this is definitely a vibe that I've seen elsewhere. Just Tanuki Sunset has a really cute raccoon that you can customize, and I like it. Moving on, <laughs> Joel. Yes, you have played Totally Reliable Delivery Service, a game we beta tested on this podcast. Yeah, so. Uh... Everybody knows about my PlayStation 3 misadventure now. Uh, it's It's been remedied. Alex's storage bin has been pilfered. Uh, we saw a cool wizard staff just sort of sitting there in the corner. That was kind of cool. That was cool. Uh, I, don't know, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know why that was there. It was, it was like oak. Yeah. Like an oak wood twisted wi- staff. It didn't look like it, a cheap prop at all. <laughs> uh, damn, that's cool. Yonder me would have been tempted to take it. Uh, <laughs> so Just sitting in the corner of my storage unit. I don't know why. So, thanks to Xbox Game Pass, this game is on there. And I remember you talking about it and watching the video that we made 
on totally reliable delivery service. And my first thought was like, I like moving out. I like dang beasts. The the sort of like fidgety, futzy around, kind of doodly armed, trying to grab things and, and weird visit stuff. Uh, so we picked this up and we did a stream to do a placeholder for this. And my eight year old, or sorry, my nine year old loves it. Light light hits. It's one of his favorite things right now. If he if he sees me turn it on. He has to join us, and I'm learning that he's a bit of a troll. <laughs> so, so like, uh. he uh, he's the kind of person that when you're playing this game, he's gonna grab onto you and try to pull you in the opposite direction of where you want to go. Uh, he will hang on to a helicopter side and wiggle around that puts you off kilter of your sort of equilibrium when you're trying to fly places. Fantastic. Uh, and uh, he would then repeatedly, when you try it into a vehicle for a mission, turn it on and off. So you have to, oh. and, and like do the whole like holding on to it, watching you walk towards the vehicle, turn it off, watch you come back, turn on. <laughs> and so like my experiences have mostly been revolved around navigating that, as well as doing very few actual missions, just like. The game is good at being kind of fun on its own without doing missions, with just sort of being a, a simple sandbox of, oh, we can go to this area, and it's going to have sort of buddies, and over here it's going to have hot air balloons you can fly, and there's the the airport with the plane and the helicopter. Oh, and there are even boats you can go around. And hang gliders, I got to a mountain where there was a sled that you could unlock and go down the sled. It It is just a fun silly chaos engine if you're not concerned about doing the missions and is it still a, is it still a single map i've only seen one map so i'm, I'm taking that as yes uh, i didn't see okay. any options for otherwise they they gave you like four different ways to connect to people though like different servers you can join or create and stuff i, I haven't checked into like whether there's cross play of some type or uh how they do that but it, it, they definitely emphasize the online play more than the local. The local is like the fourth down. <laughs> so they, they definitely want to encourage that, it seems like. But yeah, I, I've, other than sort of like telling my son to scale back, like screwing with people, <laughs> it, it's it's been pretty fun for the most part. Uh, a lot of really wacky experiences and giggling and, and laughing and arguing. It kind of reminds me of like Human Fall Flat, where it's got that Gang Beast engine, but you then. Um, they put like a, a rough, very loose, like uh, like here here's the point. You yeah. Know, they kind of give you like a story almost, but very rarely do you ever like do that. You're just kind of getting into shenanigans. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And, and the controls. So it, it's kind of weird to say this because I feel like the controls are almost too precision based. Because mm-hmm. there's the two different sets of triggers, and one sets of triggers has you grabbing the item. The other one has you lifting it up somewhere. And I, for me, that was just like a tad too much of like, okay, I'm fiddling with this. I'm mean, having to remember which is which. Okay, I've got a latch on here. And then like, they don't always connect very well when you try to latch onto it because of how imprecise it can kind of be. Uh, so I, I that's a little bit of a, a minor gripe. I think I'm just because I'm too used to the top-down perspective where... It's like overcooked or moving out, and there's not really any up or down motion when you're trying to pick stuff up or drop it off. But overall, it's it's a lot of fun, and I think it's again, it's a good sandbox just for exploring and and seeing the little humor and bits and stuff. So fantastic, Alec. I suggest you bring the girls in on that. Yeah, it sounds like I'm gonna have to. I just might have to clean the office so they can get in here (laughs) yeah maybe maybe we'll see yeah now uh, i did want to uh just put up a little bit of a bonus segment here uh we've been we've always had a a segment called how do you stream where we discuss uh the ways that we are streaming games uh one note is that uh we currently having a review that's going to be going up uh relatively soon where uh, Big Brother to the site Phil had written about Antstream Arcade, which is a streaming service 
that will let you play old arcade games. So uh, he's over there playing uh, Fatal Fury, King of Fighters, uh, Original Mortal Kombat, and a couple other ones on this streaming service. So uh, look out for that. But for me, uh, I bought myself this handy-dandy Backbone iPhone controller. And I am playing uh, xCloud, uh, the uh, Game Pass service that allows me to play to my phone. With an iPhone, mind you, uh, ask me anything. How are the treaders? <laughs> they are mushy. They are mushy. It's like pressing on a marshmallow. I don't even get a good click in there. It just it doesn't it doesn't feel great. Mm. Everything else feels okay. Everything uh, the deep has a little mushy too, but not not nearly as much. It's uh just those triggers. Those triggers that they're too they're used too often for precision based stuff in games. And so that's why I don't like the sort of squishy uh, buttons there. But well, I mean, how often do you think that you're going to be playing X Cloud on your phone, uh, streaming, and need that hardcore precision? That's kind of where I've kind of gone to it. Someday when 5G comes, you're going to regret those words. Agreed. Uh, I mean, 5G isn't going to penetrate most people's houses just due to the wavelength. You really need a lower wavelength than what 5G is offering. But how's the delay on the Stream Pass or the Xbox Cloud, the X Cloud? Yeah, it's actually really good. It's gotten a lot better since uh, we initially uh, tried it. I remember playing, uh, trying Yakuza and having a really hard uh, locking back and forth, like a really jagged stop and start, stop and start. But uh, it has been improved, or maybe my internet has been improved. I did get a new router recently, <laughs> but I digress. I uh, I mean, I we haven't had any freezing pictures of you this time around, so maybe. Yeah, yeah maybe. Uh, I tried some, uh, I went from everything from like playing like a little puzzle game, which is very simple and easy, uh, with no problems on the backbone. Uh, but then I also played things like I tried Celeste, which is a very Twitch based, uh, platformer. And, uh, I will say that that didn't feel amazing. It, it, it was fully functional in the, and with the controller, it was fine, but it didn't feel precise. It didn't feel snappy. It felt just a little, little, almost like the triggers. It felt mushy to jump and then dash. Mm. It, it is like a little extra half second of, oh, this feels like Celeste in mud. Now, taking a step back, the xCloud games, are they streaming from your computer or are they streaming from Microsoft? From Microsoft. Okay. Because I was also because I, I don't have these games installed on my PC. I was playing also Mirror's Edge, and Mirror's Edge felt a little like the same, where it was a little bit muddy, but I didn't like I didn't Mirror's Edge. It. Yeah, I guess Mirror's Edge has a little bit. It's more kinetic. You're supposed to be running and jumping and dodging and all that stuff. Yeah. So I'm gonna say that. I don't know if I will continue that one on Nextcloud either. So, what kind of games would this be good for? I think anything that doesn't take intense, quick, precise movement. So uh, I could see a lot of puzzlers or I can see uh, some JRPGs feeling good. Even, um, I'm trying to think of, hmm. Strategy games. That'd be a good genre to do here. Yeah, yeah. And oh, then, yeah. again, like, there's, there's a lot on Game Pass. A lot of games just in general. Um, I feel like, uh, let's see here. I probably wouldn't play... Battle Toads, but I could see Blair Witch, like the Blair Witch first-person game that we played. Visual novels, uh, life interactive storytelling like Life is Strange or Telltale's Walking Dead. I think that's Darkest work Dungeon. Okay. Oh yeah, Darkest Dungeon would be great. You know, I could even see a case for Deep Rock Galactic as if I'm because I'm not necessarily being have to rush and be super fast, except for unless when the combat gets really heavy. Then I would say that, yeah, maybe it'll, you'll find the lacking there. Yeah, some of the higher hazard levels oh, would absolutely be helpful. Yeah, but here, like, you know, Dragon Quest Builders. Uh, I'm sure some of the Fable games would be fine. Frostpunk, especially, you know, again, Frostpunk maybe not great with a controller. But still, I'm, I'm just looking through the list here, and there's a lot of 
uh, games that I can see being uh, really well taken to having the controller and just having xCloud in general. There is a, a, a feature where they have moved the, like they say, these games are great with touch controls, but uh, I will say no. They're not great. <laughs> <laughs> Hence why I bought the backbone is because uh, my Xbox Bluetooth pairing was only okay. And even then, I couldn't hook up my Bluetooth headphones. So I wanted my Bluetooth headphones. I wanted my backbone. And also, it's got like um, a, a charging port on the bottom. So I can just plug my, my, charging, my charging cord into here. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. The, the, it's got a screenshot button, a stream button, which you can record video. And then it's Ooh. got the menu and then a a backbone button that takes you to the backbone UI, which doesn't do a lot. The uh, app and UI uh, don't really give you anything. They just show you all the ways that you can stream, but it doesn't give you any access to them. You still have to go to the Game Pass uh, app, which with, I don't know if you guys know about iPhone, to get around it. They have, uh, you with iPhone just in general, there's a way to take a website and make it an icon, just like a PC, an icon on your... So you can have, you know, Reddit, the the web browser, from your browser on your desktop of your phone. So okay. they, So what they do is they have you go to the Microsoft website, log in, and they actually have steps. They go, here's how you take it and save it as, a de- as an icon on your desktop. So whenever you go to, like, look it up, Game Pass on iPhone, here are the steps. And they have it all. They Everywhere you go, and I, on backbone they give you all the steps too they go here's the video and how you do it and it just saves it as an icon and whenever you do it sadly you do have to like log into your microsoft xbox account every almost every time but mm. so it's like just pulls a hassle it's it's actually it's it's surprisingly much smoother than i would imagine uh, i think that this is very promising for the future and i'm very surprised so how long do you think it'll be until we talk about the steam deck on how do you stream well stream deck comes out in december so i would assume mm, alec that you'll, we'll probably be talking about it in january <laughs> i'll see if we'll see if i get in on that uh reservation i have to uh talk with the boss unless this is a business expense we might want to talk on the boss on that one <laughs> trying to think well <clears throat> I'm, I, I'm i'm debating on like picking a game and then just saying, well, this is going to go on the backlog and it's going to be straight from Xbox Game Pass from my phone. And I'm trying to debate what it should be. I've never played Psychonauts. And I hear great things. It's a fun one. It doesn't require a whole lot of Twitch. Okay. Okay. Maybe I'll get into finally get Slay the Spire because uh, Getty loved that one. Oh, man. Super Hot Mind Control Delete's on there. Joel, should I do Super Hot Mind Control Delete? I thought you already did that. I thought you already did that. No, I did not. Mm. Anyway, then probably. Uh, what it comes down to is that uh, Xbox Game Pass on your fo- on your iPhone works great, especially if you want to make your iPhone super hot. I'm not talking about the game. Literally, it makes my iPhone burn up. So I get roughly an hour and a half to play. Ugh. Yeah, it is what it is. Now let's move on to one last thing. One last thing where we say one last sentence, one last statement, sending us into the weekend, you listener, to the weekday. For me, I'm on the tail end of two major video projects that I have been editing and working on and recording and writing for a while now. And I am excited that both of them are nearing completion. So then I can relax and maybe play a video game or two. Joel? I, uh, since Daddy's gone, and we all need a way to catch up on the beat list, I'm assigning all of us a video game assignment. This a, is three a, assignments, a, a pop, though. You a, realize yeah, we'll call, yeah. we'll, we'll call it a pop quiz, because it's not a full homework. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I, I ran across an indie developer on Twitter named, uh, sorry, indie developer, uh, Druid Games, D R E W I D Games. And they came out with a game called Seventh Chance today, announced it on Twitter. And it is a $2.54 purchase. And what? It's a, a Steam. Steam. Okay. Uh, said it's only to be like 30, 45 minutes. 
I guess it's a story about something. Something about second chances. <laughs> Even though it's called Seven Chances. But, uh, yeah, that's my challenge for this week. Okay, we'll add it to the beat list. At, at Alec, your beat list, you have, like, two games. Yeah, I, I have not, like, actually completed many games. I, uh... Yeah, I just keep switching. I'm so hyped that I'm in top. I'm, in, I'm, I'm ahead, and I'm about to get another one. Uh, two, the two this weekend with that with Druid one. But if everybody gets it, then no one gets it. <laughs> Alec, what's your one last thing? I, man, I'm just really looking forward to the weekend and finishing. I know I said it last week, but finishing out Axiom Verge. That's 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 going to happen. I swear. <laughs> Woo! So many like me and many frog fractions too. Mini preview. Yay, nay. What do you mean? Should people play this game? Oh, Axiom Verge. Hell yes. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's a fantastic if, I mean, game. If you like, if you like uh, Super Metroid. Yes. Yeah. It, it is totally okay. a love a love homage to. Super Metroid, you can feel it all over there, but it and especially considering that they try, they do expand the idea of Super Metroid with like new weapons, new mechanics, and yes. stuff like that. Gotcha. I see. Yeah. yeah, if you if you were at all sold on Super Metroid, like at all, you should play Axiom Verge. Okay. Joel's probably going to talk about Super Metroid next week. I think probably. Okay. And that will be it for this week's Super GG Radio. Before you go, you can find us on Twitter at Super GG Radio and twitch.tv slash Super GG Radio, where we are streaming Frog Fractions 2 on Sundays. I'm this close, swear to God. Uh, we have Metroidvania Mondays, 2D Tuesdays, nothing on Wednesday, podcast streaming on Thursdays. Friday, we will be getting back to Pokemon Friday. I'm going to yell that right. And Saturday, Joel, it's whatever Joel wants to stream. We're trying to go back to Skylanders on Saturday. We will Skylander see. Skylander Saturday? Got it. If you'd like to reach us with questions or input, our email address is mail at superdgradio.com and provide a review on iTunes or the Hey Arnold reference of your choice. Stop making beaver jokes. There's never going to be a beaver joke. Except Thanks for, right for listening. There. GG Joel. By referencing the beaver joke, you have said the beaver joke. GG Alec. <laughs> Good game, Alex. Good night, everybody. Oh,